the lure of the message. The message, whether in text form or through some other electronic medium, is a tempting and ultimately manipulative tool of ours. During our seduction of you, we use it to brilliant effect, peppering your day with these short form billets de, in order to draw you close to us. The glowing compliments sent through letters glowing on your screen. The tingle, the excitement, and the smile to oneself on receipt of this message. They are like so many little gifts, each one waiting to be opened by you, and the delight spreading across your face as you read the latest missive that contains our rapturous love for you. Each time one arrives, you wonder what it might read, and you are never disappointed, as we sprinkle our fairy dust over you from afar, through the electronic devices we are both connected to. You feel wonderful, savouring that rush of appreciation. It is fantastic and memorable and you never delete them, storing up all these heartfelt tributes and declarations. We are aware that you will keep them, and most of all, when the misery descends, you will sit scrolling back through these text exchanges, evidence of a happier time, remnants of the golden period. As time advances, you begin to expect these messages, it is entirely understandable. You get used to waking and seeing a message waiting for you, more welcome than a cup of tea or coffee being brought to you in bed. You anticipate the rush, and we do not let you down. The content, the message, feeding your desire for love, affection and passion. This repeated sending of messages is designed to condition you. We want you to equate the arrival of the message with pleasure, with affection, and with love. We ingrain it into your routine. The first thing that you do on awakening is to reach for your phone on your nightstand and look for our message. This is done to make you check frequently your phone during the day to see if there is a message from us. You experience those phantom vibrations when you, when your phone is on silent and in your bag or in your pocket. You pluck it out and check and feel dismayed as there is no message. I have seen this happen. I have heard it talked about. Perhaps there is a message, but it isn't from us. And you continue to feel anxious as you await your daily hit. Eventually it arrives and you feel the surge of delight coursing through you as we deliver. Little by little, in accordance with our narcissistic methodology of salami slicing, remember, unconscious where lesser or mid-range, conscious where greater or the ultra, you start to focus on the relevant device, waiting for the ping, the buzz, and or the flash of light. You keep glancing at your phone, mind unable to focus on the task in hand. Once that message arrives, you open it, devouring it, like a starving man given food after two weeks adrift at sea. You spend more time responding to the messages, checking the phone and cultivating ways to keep the flow of messages going so that it becomes the matter which you focus on the most during the course of your day. You wait, watch, check and keep back and forth, beginning to will the phone to buzz and provide you with that message. Soon you start to prompt them, messaging us first when you have not heard from us. Once you wait in the morning before you would contact us, then an hour and now it has become the first thing that you do when you wake up. You see no message from us, 
so you message us. We reply at once, and the relief washes over you in an awesome way. You prompted that Hoover trigger. The Hoover execution criteria were met. We responded to assert control over you and to prod for more fuel. After time, the reply duration becomes elongated, and that short space becomes a longer pause, a greying hiatus, and this prompts you to message again. Oh, we identify that the message that you will send, you try to pretend that you're not anxious because you haven't heard from us, but you start to write things such as, I'm not sure if my message reached you, my phone has been playing up. I'm struggling for signal here. Did you get my message? Just wanted to check my message reached you. And don't worry about responding straight away. I know you're busy. Just wanted to make sure everything is all right. No rush. Answer when you can. But you're desperate for us to answer. You are desperate to receive the assurance that this magical being that has waltzed into your life is still there, remains interested in you. Once upon a time, we sought this of you as we asserted our control. But once we become satisfied that you are within that control, then unless you do something to threaten that control, when we are in the relationship with you, we form the view that you are under that control. And therefore, our attentiveness drops off. This, of course creates a change in the way that we have dealt with you. This creates the gnawing anguish that rises as you wonder, is something now wrong? We haven't said as such, we haven't lashed out at you. It is just that the lure of the message is such, our attentiveness has drifted, and you feel that. Your desperation seeps through the phone, the increasing anguish and anxiety tangible. And then, asserting our control once again, pressing you for fuel, we release you from your worries and reply, which prompts your further reply. Your gratitude evident, even though you may not write as such. How the fuel flows, and it is all intended by our narcissism, whether conscious or unconscious. Our narcissism has actively structured our approach so that you become conditioned in this way, bound to us, reliant upon us. The phone becomes the barometer of your day. Early, early message received from us, you can relax and enjoy the next two hours until you start wondering where the next one is. Such power is wielded by us through the simple act of sending you a message. And we haven't even started on using it to fully devalue you yet. So often, you rely on receiving the message. But the irony is, you rarely actually get the message. <laughs>